is Kirill Nikolaev. I uh, work for a hosting company called Fozim. My team is responsible for virtual private servers based on Microsoft technologies, Hyper-V especially. Uh, and today I uh, will show you how to manage updates, update installation in our infrastructure. Uh, we do it automatically with, obviously, PowerShell. Uh, we are a small team, but we have dozens of servers. Uh, we obviously want them to be constantly updated. Uh, what makes our infrastructure a bit special is that uh, we have lots of scripts running. Uh, we, uh, they run pretty asynchronously. We are not sure when one script starts and uh, another uh, one ends. We also uh, have some requirements during update process. We need to uh, move workload from uh, one host to another to not affect our clients' services. We uh, want to set downtime in our monitoring systems so we uh, wouldn't receive uh, any uh, notifications from a monitoring system that our host is down. And we also would like to uh, run some checks after, host, after an update is installed to a host to ensure that uh, we can use this host in production. Uh, so obviously this uh, thing about uh, processes which run asynchronously is a bit unusual and uh, it's not very easy to tell an uh, automation system that one host is busy right now and the other uh, is not and can be updated. Uh, to, uh, to fight this problem, we, uh, we developed a lock in, in, an infrastructure locking framework. Uh, this is a partial model uh, which is designed to help our automatic, system, automatic update system to uh, detect if a host can be updated right now or if it is busy by some tasks. It uses uh, log files, uh, it puts them on network hosts when a task is run, uh, is run against that host. Uh, let's take a look how it actually works. Uh, for example, here uh, this commandlet, log host resource, puts a log file on some network host called, uh, sorry, called FS02. When we run this, uh, it returns something into our variable. Let's look into this. As you can see, uh, we got two log objects in return, which are actually just files on a file system. Uh, they uh, reside in a network share. Uh, by default, it's called resource logs, uh, which we created on each of our servers. Uh, we logged only one system, FS02, but we also got a log file for DC01. Why? That's because uh, this framework supports dependencies. Uh, what does it mean? It means uh, that uh, some network hosts can depend on other hosts. Uh, it means, uh, in this case, that uh, when we work with FS02, DC01 should be online. Mm, for example, if uh, in this case it's a controller, it's a domain controller, and if this domain controller will be offline, we will not be able to authenticate on this uh, FS02 machine. Uh, that's why we have uh, two logs returned here. Uh, if think of these logs as of mutexes, if you are uh, if you are aware how mutexes works in programming, uh, you lock some objects in memory to uh, for monopoly access to them. This is uh, the same concept, but you lock not objects in memory, uh, but the whole network host. Uh, to remove a lock, uh, we you just use unlock feature. That's it. Uh, how uh, this is a quite simple configuration, but we can do much more complex. This is a configuration file, an example configuration file, which we include in our modeler, which is, by the way, available on GitHub uh, and, of course, completely open source. Uh, here we have a host called VMM LAB01. It depends on VMM01. VMM01 depends on v DC02. DC02 depends on DC01. DC01 depends on HV01. 
but this C02 also depends on HV02 being online. So by locking VMM LAB01, we will automatically lock all these hosts but FS01. All but this one. Because on VMM LAB01 does not depend on FS01 directly on or indirectly. Uh, of course, to be able to use this, uh, we needed to modify our scripts which run in the infrastructure a bit. Uh, we needed to insert commands to lock and unlock or network host in our scripts. Here we have a simple example of a script which copies file from one uh, file server to another. Uh, first, it locks this, the host uh, on which the script runs itself. Uh, we call host lock host resource without passing it any command or any computer name parameter. Then we lock the destination folder. In our case, uh, it's an share on uh, FS02 machine. Uh, we use a specific, uh, a special command log file resource which accepts network paths and extracts computer names from them. Then uh, we use our usual copy item program or copy item commandlet to copy the file and uh, finally we unlock these uh, machines. You have to unlock machines manually otherwise they will be locked forever and uh, an automatic update system will still uh, think that they are in use. Let's take a look at this script, how it performs. We lock our local machine, we lock our remote machine, and we start uh, copying our fi uh, file. It will take some time, so we will return to it later. Uh, so, uh, as, the next, as the next step, we developed a framework for automatically install updates to our machines. Uh, this framework, of course, knows about these log files and uh, does not touch machines which are currently in use. It's written in pure PowerShell. It's uh, very highly configurable. It's easily extensible. Uh, it has a built-in, uh, simple built-in scheduler uh, where what does it do? It takes a set of uh, computers from the configuration of this modeler and uh, executes maintenance steps on these computers one by one. If you have a configuration system in place uh, which you would prefer to schedule these tasks, you also can use, still use this modeler with all uh, its features, but uh, running against a single computer at once. Uh, we have a command of this called Invoke Computer Maintenance. Uh, we support plugins, uh, so you can extend the modeler functionality by writing your own scripts and uh, attaching uh, them into this uh, modeler. The configuration is written in JSON, and we will take a look at it in just a minute. Uh, how, do we, how does the modeler actually perform uh, the maintenance? First, we detect if a machine needs an uh, update. We don't use any magic here, we just uh, use standard uh, Windows client which is already installed on your machine, uh, we, uh, which means that you should have a WSOS server in your infrastructure or your machines must be able to connect to Microsoft update servers. Uh, then the next step, uh, we call it pre-clear, uh, and as you can see, it's in cursive. Uh, steps which are marked in cursive are the steps where we call for external plugins or as we call them step scripts. Step scripts are just uh, partial scripts where you can uh, put any command you would like to be executed on this uh, step. Those scripts uh, accept computer names. They must accept uh, a parameter computer name. Um, and that's actually uh, not much to say about them. Uh, then we move away any active workload which uh, is which might be on the machine uh, again, which we would like to update. Uh, we support several types of, of workloads and uh, are working on adding new. Then we run a post clear plugin if there is any. Uh, then we install updates and reboot on the machine if uh, the update requires it. Then we run a test uh, step script to test if the machine is ready to be put back online. We run pre-restore step script. We move workload back if we moved it uh, out of the machine previously. And as a final step, we run post-restore uh, plugin. 
why would you want to use this system? Uh, first of all, if you, like us, have um, scripts running in your infrastructure and it's um, not easy for a human to schedule it, uh, or if not so easy to build uh, a predetermined scheduler when uh, one machine can go down and the other should not. Uh, resource Locker will take care of this for you. Uh, it's all completely automatically. It will, uh, it, it basically allows external systems to wait and automatic maintenance is aware of these uh, locks and supports them. Uh, secondly, if you want to run some uh, tasks every time you, man you maintain a server. Uh, they are just PowerShell scripts, so you can run anything there. Uh, this system is written in pure PowerShell. It's very simple, so you do not need to invest in a complex system. We couldn't afford uh, ourselves to invest in a complex system with, I don't know, with SQL databases and so on. Uh, so we just developed our own simple system. Uh, let's take a look how does it work. Oh yes, uh, first let's take a look at how a step script file, uh, one of the features of a step script file. Uh, here on this slide, uh, we have several step scripts, uh, se several steps where we call for external plugins and the cool feature about them is that you can uh, transfer variables from one step to another. Uh, we achieve this uh, by uh, using a get variable at the end of each step script where you want to uh, uh, export your variable. For example, here we have a variable called host, na host downtime. It, is, uh, it was uh, defined somewhere earlier. Uh, and then we want to pass this variable to another step script. We just call get variable with the name of the, of the variable and automatic maintenance framework takes care of uh, everything else. Uh, at the step script where we want to accept this variable, uh, we should uh, use this variables parameter. Uh, we should filter it and uh, this way we will extract uh, our variable which was uh, passed from another step script uh, into this step script. We just uh, get it value and make a new variable out of that value. Um, okay. It doesn't seem to... Okay, let's uh, just type. Yeah. So I'll just call this command and uh, uh, my infrastructure will be updated. My infrastructure for this demo is quite simple. Uh, it looks like this. It's just one uh, host. And as you can see, here is a property called template. What, do, what, uh, what does it mean? Uh, the configuration supports templates. You don't have to specify uh, lots of properties for, um, say, network or for Windows hosts with same properties. You just define a template for these hosts and then use this template uh, in uh, your hosts file. You just uh, Put it. Put the name of the template in the template property. So with uh, with this, here is FS02 server. It needs to install one update. Uh, it's a Saracen stack update from uh, May of this year. Let's execute this. What do we see here is a debug log. Uh, the model has extensive debug logging, of course. Uh, it is, uh, can be turned off on or on. In this case, it's on. Uh, the model itself has a uh, configuration file. Uh, not here. a uh, configuration file where you can uh, redefine any variable which is used by this model. Uh, now let's uh, take a look uh, while there is a maintenance in progress. Let's take a look at this uh, host, more, a more complex uh, configuration file of automatic maintenance model. 
this is an example which is included uh, with the model. Eh? When you download it uh, from PowerShell Gallery, you get this example. Here we have several steps or several servers defined. Some of them have some templates. Uh, some of them have uh, custom attributes defined. The thing is uh, that uh, the configuration system al allows you to merge uh, several templates into one, and it allows you to merge templates or configuration from templates uh, with configuration defined directly on hosts. Uh, here we have this, an example template. Uh, you have uh, these commands which define uh, these plugin step scripts, uh, just a name of a script which will be executed at each stage. Uh, for example, here's al also an update filter which we uh, use uh, to uh, install updates. Uh, by default, uh, we do not install updates for Serialite, say. We don't install preview version of updates. Uh, what what else is cool about templates is that they support uh, including. You can include one template into another, and their configuration will be merged if uh, one template redefines uh, properties of, uh, of a host. Uh, these properties will be rewritten uh, from the template with, uh, uh, with the higher value. Uh, how is it going? Okay. It didn't go well. Why? It didn't go well because there is an exception. An exception tells us uh, an exception tells us that the computer FS02 is locked. Why is it locked? Let's take a look. No, not here. So we just go to a network share on this FS02 uh, machine resource locks, and uh, it is indeed locked. Let's take a look who locked it. A lock file is a simple text file uh, with several attributes inside. Uh, we have a lock time here, we have a description, and we have a color. A color is, uh, usually you should fill a color uh, with a description of an entity which called, uh, which set this lock uh, in place. So in this case, it's our demo script, which we used for copy, which uh, was copying that file. Let's take a look at that script. Ah, yes. As you can see, the script did not indeed unlock. Let's unlock these hosts. Okay, unlock commands done. And yeah, uh, the lock file is gone. So let's try to run the maintenance once again. How to start up with this simple system? First, of course, you just download it from PowerShell Gallery. Uh, it will install all dependencies automatically. A resource locker will be installed automatically. Then you should install uh, all additional PowerShell modules which you might need uh, for your workload, for your step scripts. Uh, then you should write a con two config at least two configuration files, one for resource locker, which describes how your system uh, how your systems are connected to each other, which system depends on which. Uh, then you should uh, write a configuration for automatic maintenance uh, to, be, uh, to explain how you would like uh, your systems uh, to install updates. Uh, then, of course, you should like plugin scripts uh, if you need. So, for example, if you want to disable monitoring, uh, you should do this in uh, one of the uh, in uh, prayer uh, install script. Uh, you, need to, you will also need to provide some network access and permissions for an account which will perform this automatic maintenance. Uh, obviously, you need to be, this account needs to be able to write into these resource logs shares, uh, and uh, it will also need to be a local administrator at each machine where you would like to install updates because uh, we call uh, these uh, system functions and uh, only administrator can do that. If you have uh, systems, if you have an infrastructure with several security tires defined, you will need one instance of uh, this system for each of your security tires. Uh, automatic maintenance requires access uh, through uh, SMB, VNRM, VNRM and RPC. 
uh, at the same time. We are working on it to uh, be able to do everything through WinRM, but it is not ready yet. As the, as the last step, you should register your scheduler task to actually perform automatic maintenance. So you just uh, put this uh, command invoke infrastructure maintenance in your task scheduler, and it will do uh, the rest for you automatically. Let's take a look how our installation works so far. Uh, I suppose it should end soon. Yes, it has ended successfully. There is no uh, error this time because the host was unlocked. Uh, one downtime or uh, one uh, problem with calling, uh, with installing Windows updates automatically is that GUI is not updated. Uh, if we close and open this uh, settings control panel, uh, it will still tell us that we need to install this update. But if we look into the system uh, event log, we will see here is an update from Windows Update Client saying that Windows has just successfully installed this service and stack update. Uh, so at the end, everything works. Uh, all our work, all our PowerShell models are published on our GitHub account uh, for the hosting slash automatic maintenance. Uh, and uh, we also publish them when we release a new versions uh, to PowerShell Gallery. Uh, if you want to, uh, uh, to talk with me directly, uh, this is my handle in Twitter and on GitHub, exchange 12 rocks. Um, I suppose uh, that's it for now. That's all what I wanted to uh, tell you. If you have any questions, please. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, wait a sec. It doesn't work. Okay, uh, just say a question, I will repeat it. Of course not. Uh, we have a monitoring system. Uh, in our case, it's Isinga. Uh, we run a monitor on each uh, host, which tells us uh, when the host uh, was updated last time. Our threshold uh, is uh, uh, about 45 days. If uh, a host is not updated in 45 days, uh, we get an alert, and we go to investigate what's going on with that server. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, the question, I forgot to repeat the question. The question was, uh, how do we, uh, how do we uh, understand that uh, we are in compliance uh, for updating, if uh, all our servers are updated or some are not? Yes, please. Scale? Uh, yeah. Uh, the question is, how do we scale? Uh, unfortunately, not very well right now, because uh, s the only option to scale right now is to separate uh, your systems, uh, spin as many instances of this uh, automatic maintenance model as you need to be able to update all your servers in a month. Uh, in our case, one uh, instance is enough. Uh, we think about parallelization, but right now the only parallelization we can do is just to spin up another instance and put another, uh, another set of hosts under that instance. Yes, please. Uh, you have a model called uh, SVVM Ah, uh, yes. Uh, we have this model called SCVM Reliable Migration. Uh, that's a thing. Uh, we are almost like Azure. We run our virtual machines on uh, standalone Hyper-V hosts. Uh, but unlike Azure, we cannot afford uh, to put them down when uh, we maintain our uh, when, when we maintain these hosts. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, built-in uh, migration uh, of System Central Virtual Machine Manager is not, does not work very well, so we had to write our own uh, model to migrate virtual machines from one standalone Hyper-V host to another. That's what this modeler is for. I 
Okay, then uh, you might take a look at this model, which is also published in our GitHub and in the PowerShell gallery. Well, if there is no other questions, thank you so much for being here.